It's Thursday, the 2nd of June, 2022. In today's extraordinary general podcast, we are reacting to the bolt out of the blue news that Neil Critchley has left the building, having made the decision to carry Stephen Gerrard's bags as the new assistant manager at Aston Villa. Mm, I'm John Asperl, and this is the Seasiders podcast, Extra Time Show, abandoned by Critch. Well, you thought you'd all got rid of us for at least a few weeks in the summer, but thanks to Neil Critchley, we are back on uh, the Queen's Jubilee, Thursday the 2nd of June. We're all expecting to be celebrating, bunting, etc. out. I've even got some tangerine and white bunting, if you can see it there. Um... Nick, Connor, and Matt are Matt Smith. Welcome, Matt. Uh, is joining us this evening. Now, I was outside preparing a uh, to have a barbecue, and we also had a uh, an under nines game. I was managing, so I was preparing for that. All jolly with my sister, um, prepping the BBQ, and then the, the terrible, terrible news came in that it was going to rain, and the barbecue was going to be cancelled. <laughs> But joking aside, for me, this is a kind of uh, uh, Nicker, a Kennedy moment all, almost. Where were yeah. you when you found out Neil Critchley had been accosted <laughs> to Aston Villa by <laughs> Stephen Gerrard? Um, I was... <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> I was sat at home um, and I had quite a nice day up to that point. Um, lunchtime, I was, the sun was out. England were battering New Zealand in the cricket. I was thinking about looking forward to next season. And then by tea time, it was raining. We'd lost about eight wickets for three runs and Critchley had fucked off. Um, <clears throat> it all went pear-shaped. And got the text through and it was a link to the official site and I thought, it's a joke, this. It's, you know, someone's... People do it, don't they? Normally on April Fool's Day and it's a fake tweet or whatever. Um and I was just staring at it in disbelief. And my phone pinging with all the WhatsApp group and it, it, it started to sink in. And I felt, I think I said to you, I felt like, I felt like I'd been dumped. <laughs> I felt cheated. It was just like, no, this can't, it, it can't be. You know, I, I, well, I think we all know that one day he, he'd go, but I don't think any of us thought it would be in the, these circumstances. I thought, maybe into next season, a, a decent, you know, or a, a big club would have a shocking start to the season, sack the manager and, and maybe have a look at Critch. That's the way I thought he'd end up going, whether that's a top championship side or bottom end of the Prem, you know. Um, and it just seems, I get that it's a massive club and it's the Premier League and he's probably trebled his wages, but it's to go from being manager and being in charge of, you know, all the decisions and the projects, as they call it nowadays, um, to being Stevie G's yes man, I suppose. It just, I don't know, it seems a bit weird to me. A bit of a, almost a downward step, even though he's he's going up a league, if you know what I mean. Mm. And all of the, you know, there is no loyalty in football, is there? But you kind of felt that we were building something and he was a massive part of it. That's what he talked about with the, you know, and the, the pattern of the badge with tears in his eyes and the fist pumps it's, and all yeah, standing it, all of that. It just feels a bit, I don't know. It feels like you've been cheated almost, Yeah, doesn't it? it uh, it's like it was yeah. all an illusion and it wasn't real. And it makes yeah. you, it, it, for me, it kind of makes you lose a bit of faith in humanity almost. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you see yeah. him doing all that, the, like Nick said, the crying, or well, the almost crying. And, I think are we being a bit naive to to think football just isn't completely and utterly dominated by money now? That's we probably are. Yeah. yeah, we probably are. You know, if you look at it, we look at it. We're invested as fans, aren't we? And, and ultimately, 
for anyone else. Um, it's a job, and I suppose if we were offered double, triple, or whatever our wages, um, that would probably be the deciding factor, and and you know we'd we'd move on. And there'll be loads of conspiracy theories, won't they, about why he's done it and what's going on? And it might not just it could just be that. He's earning a lot more money, uh, and he, he might prefer not being in the number one spot. You know, so I don't, we'll, we'll probably never get to know the truth, will we? Mm. Uh, Matt, firstly, uh, welcome back to the pod. It's been far too long. Uh, great to see you back. Hope you hope it's like riding a bike. This, uh, yeah, I'll fall off at any moment, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. So, Matt, where, where were you? Where were you when you found out the news? What were you doing? And how do you feel? So today is a uh, momentous day, obviously, with it being the Queen's Jubilee and also my 21st wedding anniversary. So um, obviously my wife was delighted that at uh, two o'clock this afternoon my phone was going mental and I was just slightly distracted for a half an hour or so and hence why I'm on the podcast tonight and just sort of shifted her to one side um, well this is an extra but, it's an egp this isn't it it is yeah so she understood obviously what the situation EGP, was love egp exactly an egp was far more worthy than uh 21st <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah um shot like everybody else really um so i was in uh Lytham at the time uh having a nice drinking something to eat, and then it all went uh, peak tongue, as they say, really. And it was just a bolt out of the blue, wasn't it? Um, there was no, like it normally is with football and transfers and goodness knows what, there's always a rumour before it happens. But this came completely out of the left field. So, yeah, uh, shot, staggered, you know, as many other words as you want to put into it really and I was just just let down really more than anything else that's the thing you know I mean as Nick's alluded to it was like we've all been bought into this big picture this big project um you know we've got this model blah 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 and now we're just another football club aren't we that has no sort of I don't know rudder I guess really We've got big plans going on outside of the football pitch, you know, with the new um, training facility and all the rest of it. And maybe that's a factor that maybe you see in the bank balance and the books and all the rest of it that we can't get players in that he might want to get in and, and, and such like. But, you know, really what, what, what's changed? And, you know, if somebody comes in like Aston Villa and, and, and says, hey, here's tre- treble your wages, quadruple your wages or whatever, you know, in the current world economic picture, I guess you'd be a fool to turn it down, really, wouldn't you? Um, but that's where we are, you know. So we're, we've now got to pick up the pieces, haven't we, and move on. But that's where I was this afternoon, happily enjoying my wedding anniversary stroke, the Queen's Jubilee, and then all of a sudden, bang, and it's, that was it. It's ru- it's, it has it's ruined everyone's day, this, mm. quite badly. Eddie was, Eddie was crying when I told him the news. He was actually in tears. So luckily we had a uh, a game of football to distract him from that. But um, Connor, moving over yeah. to you now. Um, same same questions, and I'll just open up with this. Kind of reminds me of how I felt after Peter Clark left to join the South End, and like two days before the uh, the start of the season. I think, the feeling for me is similar, like, like shock and disbelief. So where were you? How were you yeah. feeling? How do you feel now? I was sat at home in front of the telly watching a really interesting YouTube video about Derby, Derby County and their dodgy accounting. And it kind of feels like that is, it kind of feels to me like this is the big first, first big test of the Sadler Mansford Blackpool Football Club project you know to use that word that's been used before on the pod um 
like Critch, as Matt says, was such an integral part of that, you know, kind of almost to the point that there was probably at times a kind of cult of personality around him that we did all buy into. So gutted that he's gone, obviously. I don't actually bear any ill will to him. Like he's gone and got a job that he sees as better. Not sure I agree with him there. You know, I don't know all the details, but you know, wish him well, wish him every success. At the end of the day, he gave me a victory in a playoff final that I got to enjoy with my dad and my mum and my sister. And at the end of the day, that's what it's really about for me. Um, I just really, really hope and I'm a little bit anxious about whether we can continue to see the right kind of decisions being made on and off the pitch to kind of keep this momentum going after what is a fairly significant setback. Very uh, rational and measured response, Connor. Nothing <laughs> less than what we'd expect from you. Um, Good you, job, you are on. If you look at the comments, <laughs> um, particularly one from Duncan Ridings there, uh, a bit on the other end of the spectrum. Um, shall I say fuck him? Well, just have him a utter fraud, mm. a liar, all the badge kissing and fist bumping, taking the piss out of BFC fans. The only real managers we've had since the 90s, something like Alan Brown and Billy Air, sod off and never come back. So, but I think obviously there's, there's a lot of upset people, though, isn't there? And you can kind of understand where, yeah. Where and on that point, you're on the fist pumping, the badge kissing, like to me, that always yeah. felt a little bit manufactured coming from where he came from. It always felt to me a little bit like he was trying to deploy the Klopp playbook to get people on side and connect with the fans. And that's great. I understand why I did it. Having the fans on the side and having everyone feel united and excited about the club does help the club achieve things. Um, but it's not, like, maybe I'm just being overly cynical, but it always felt slightly manufactured as in he was like, oh yeah, Klopp's been really successful doing this. I'm going to bring it to Blackpool and see what happens. <laughs> so how, how does everyone feel seeing seeing him doing that? And now, what after what he's done, what do you think of him as a, a as a person? It'd been better for him to have not have done all that and just got on with his work, got on with his business. We wouldn't have been as upset as we are now. I think as a as a person, I think Connor's right. You can't sort of you know castigate him in any particular way because he's probably only done what, let's be honest, ninety five percent of us would do, um, but. It, it, for me, it's just how the club now goes on in terms of who they bring in next because the, they've got this idea and this model in place and then it's just the next person that has to sort of carry that on and I'm not entirely sure who's... I mean, they may have some names already in place uh, as to who who that's going to be that, that, that takes the mantle on, really. Um, I don't know. I would imagine it'd be somebody of a similar sort of ilk, but Ask me to name somebody, and I, I, I'd struggle to be honest at mm. this particular moment in time. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll come to that in a bit later on then. So, Connor, do you want to just talk us through exactly how this happened? Um, as I was so, saying in the green room before, I've, I've really had not any time to digest the news. So, yeah, so I'll summarize what happened from, from what I've seen from kind of piecing together, you know, various comments people have made and various interviews given. Obviously, um, Michael Beale, Villa assistant head coach, you know, who had been with Gerard at Rangers and was kind of really seen as the integral kind of tactics brain behind that success, you know, came to Villa where he and Gerard implemented a very similar style with a kind of Christmas tree formation, defending kind of the middle of the pitch, etc. cetera, um, very well. Um, it feels Michael Beale has now got the role um, as manager at QPR and now Gerard kind of you know in the last couple of days really it's only been a couple of days has had an assistant head coach vacancy to fill um, from the way Gerard has spoken about this appointment you know Neil Critchley was his number one first choice with them both having managed youth sides in the Liverpool setup at kind of roughly the same time um, and then equally kind of Neil Critchley in a statement I've seen him give um, to some kind of public media. Um, he said that, you know, Stephen Gerrard made the trip up to 
you know, Blackpool kind of sat down with Critchley, explained the project, said the end goal is to get Villa back into Europe, etc. And that's something Critchley was very excited to buy. So he decided to, you know, to sign on to that journey. Um, obviously, Critchley had a contract, I think, until either 2025 or 2026. Anyway, he had a long contract with the club after he signed it late last year. Um, so I imagine we'll be getting a fair bit of compo, maybe a couple of million quid from Villa in order to let him go. But I think really when you're talking about a manager who we rate as highly as Critch, and who I think actually the broader kind of football league community rated as highly as Critch, you know, a couple of million quid isn't going to go the full distance in replacing that kind of impact on a squad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sean's just joined us. Um, unmute yourself, Sean. Hello. Uh, good evening. So, good evening. you were moving house, you're having a nice, relaxed <laughs> day in your uh, official capacity as accredited sports journalist for Lanks Live, Blackpool FC reporter. Were you privy to any of this? Did you have any, any inkling this was going to happen, or is it just um, the same bolt out of the blue as it was to, to the rest of us? It seems to have happened very quickly. You'll just have to forgive me because the cats are springing randomly around the house as I speak. Um, well, I'm sure they're traumatised as well, Sean. They are. They are. They are very <laughs> right, Kurt, Zoom, Kurt, Kurt Zoom is not in the room with you, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid not, no. Um, yeah, it, it seems to have happened over 24 hours from as far as I can tell. So I, I was, I've been off the last couple of days anyway. You know, because you obviously expect nothing much to be happening over this time. And then clearly, Neil Critchley had other ideas over the bank holiday weekend, which is very kind of him. Um, yeah, it seems to have come by surprise, not only to us, but to the players as well, as far as I'm aware. So it it just seems to have come very quickly. I think, I imagine you, you, these things don't just happen like that. I imagine that there was some sort of inkling that if Michael Beale did go to QPR or to Blackburn, um, that Critchley would be in with a shout of, of Neil of the second job at Villa. I mean, Gerard had a great relationship with Critchley and Beale as well at Liverpool. They were kind of Beale's kind of known as being the brains behind the operation with Gerard. He's always liked to have a tactician behind him, and clearly he thinks Neil Critchley's the the next one to go. But I, I'm I'm still stunned now, in all honesty, because I, I just think personally that regardless of the the situation that you're in i guess in terms of transfers and things you worked so hard in your career to to get that chance in a management job in the number one role mm. and then you've gone as soon as someone's come in for you you've gone kind of back behind the behind the limelight i guess which he, that's his preference anyway because he's always been a someone who prefers player development likes to see that and perhaps he feels his best place to do that at villa rather than blackpool Nick, I think you touched on that, didn't you, on your uh, introduction piece that met. Mm. maybe he's he's happier just to to sit you know sit in the shadows a bit and just coach and develop players rather than manage. Do you think the pressure's got to him perhaps as the head honcho? Some people just aren't cut out to be managers, are they? No, but to be fair, he's not done a bad job at it, has he? In the, mm. the, the two seasons he's been with us, but. Yeah, that that could well be his preference, and he, you know, he's gone at I suppose the first opportunity. Um, like like Matt was saying, that I think the concern is now um, who who do we get in, and are they going to be able to do what Critch did in terms of developing the players? Because a lot of those players are, you know, were, had been League One players um, who had got to perform in the Championship, and if we're not going to be bringing loads in. Um, Whoever does come in, you know, it's always tough in that second season anyway. I think it's going to be even harder now. So there's a a massive and very important decision to be made in the and it needs to be made soon as well because you, you need that whoever it's going to be to have a pre season and otherwise we've been there before, haven't we? Many times with previous ownership where it's all last minute and you see what comes of that. So there's a there's a there's a huge decision to be made in a, a short space of time. I think what frustrates me, you know, to the point of, you know, Sean and Nick pointing around, you know, he's player development, you know, that might be what he cares about more, is that 
we weren't there yet. We're not going to, we don't have the same setup as Villa and doing that stuff, but we were trying to build it, you know, just put a huge amount of investment off the pitch in the new stands, particularly the training facility that we we'll hope will help us get to cat two academy status, etc. Um, And I think, it always struck me as Critch would be the type of manager to rate that, and that's the kind of thing you would need to keep him on side. So if it does turn out that, you know, transfer budget was an issue and he wasn't felt like he was being sufficiently backed, by virtue of the fact we were already pouring up, you know, metric fuck ton of investment into all these other areas, I think that's where I'd really feel disappointed because that's your ego as a manager saying, back me my ego is bigger and needs to be sated more than these wider needs of the club and the kind of momentum we have. Um, like we were, we were on the track trying to build what hopefully would have kept Critchley, you know, five years down the line. And it felt like maybe he hasn't had the patience for that when somebody has come in with a better offer. The other thing as well is it's so ruthless in the Premier League, isn't it? You know, if, if we had a poor start to the season, and he was still here next year, next season rather, and we won one in ten, he, he wouldn't be getting potted for it, would he? You know, he's, he had quite a bit of credit in the bank in that respect. Well, yeah, Whereas, think, think, think to early on in his tenure, it could have been yeah. quite easily, couldn't yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, whereas in the Premier League, if you're going to run like that, you, you're probably out of a job. You know, he, he could be getting potted. And then and then where do you go from there? Um, so it, it's a gamble on his part as well, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I, I think to, to an extent as well, I think that sometimes one, until you get into that number one job, almost you don't quite realise how ruthless it is. I am i don't know about anyone else, but I'm very surprised that he hasn't been linked with a number of the current vacancies in the championship. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, I don't, I don't know, it's purely speculation, but the fact that he hasn't been linked with those, he's thinking, am I doing enough here? And, and if, if I then have a season where it doesn't go too well at Blackpool, then there's a risk that I lose my job, and then where am I? Kind of thing, and it's it is that ruthless because we've seen managers in the past where they have a shaky period and and then they're gone, and then that's it. Because I think that at the end of the day, you cannot you there was clearly inherent trust in in the process between all parties at, at the club, and but then still, you you know what football is like, especially when you get to the championship. Mm. If it's ruthless, and if we need to. If we feel like we need to change things to to get something, the last eight ten games of the season at some point, and then we're not quite happening under Critchley, and he gets potted, then he's he's back to square one again. Whereas he's almost leaving on his own terms, I guess, and perhaps that's because because to me, I don't I don't think Gerard is doing a fantastic job at Villa. I think that te- it, the general consensus is that Beal is a lot of his success, so. It'll be interesting to see how Villa perform with Critchley in the background because he will essentially be as have as big of say in how Aston Villa play next season as Gerard because Gerard puts a lot of trust in his number two. So perhaps that's part of the reasoning as well because if Villa then pick up next season and Critchley's involved in that, people will see that and perhaps he'll get a job off the back of it or even the Villa job itself later down the line should the Liverpool job come available and Gerard ends up with that or what have you. Things change very quickly. At the end of the day, it's a Premier League wage. But I, I just don't think he's motivated by that, which is why it's that's why it's strange to me. I don't, it just seems out of character to me. From from dealing with him, he's honestly one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, one of the most genuine people you'll ever meet. He's always been honest. He's always been nailed on with his assessments on the general whole. We've obviously had a few disagreements here and there, but you're going to have that. But he'll always back what he believes. And I don't know, it just seems out of character, this personally for me, but... It is what it is now, I guess. Do, do we think something else has happened behind the scenes, Matt? You were going to say something? Yeah, I, I was just going to say, like, Villa is one of those clubs where they, they seem to have a lot of good young talent, don't they? You know, um, obviously, there's, let's be honest, there's, let's, I'm thinking of top mayor, there's Keenan Davis who's played in uh, Forest, there's the lad who's up front, who name escapes me, I hate to say it, who's at Preston, and one or two others as well. Archer. Archer, thank you. So, you know, the, the, there's. There's obviously a um, a squad there that he could develop, and maybe that's what the next step for Villa is that they want somebody who can just push these players on to bring them into the first team, and maybe that's where they see Critchley fitting in, and you know he sees that as 
what he used to do at Liverpool and maybe that's sort of like the the next step as far as he's concerned. But yeah, I just, I just thought like everyone else really, that if he was going to leave us, he, he was going to leave us for a, you know, a bigger championship club, dare I say, or even a, you know, a, a Watford or a Burnley or, you know, whoever's struggling in, in what was the premiership for these clubs, you know, so it's just, yeah, you, you really. don't you don't mind Matt if he goes to another manager's job, do you? For a, no, you know a bit a better job for a bigger bigger club. You can understand that. You can understand that. Yeah, and what, you what great understand this regressive step? Yeah, what what grates me really is the fact that you know, and I, I harped about it earlier on. Is that it, it's just this bigger project that we all sort of w- were bought into that it was going to be. You know, he signed a five year deal, so. You know, we can give him a bit of slack with regards regards to results and and all the rest of it because it's just the bigger picture, and you know we can see what he's doing with regards to buying players in from League Two and developing them, and League One and developing them, and and all the rest of it. And and now what? You know, I don't know. The model's just ended, is it? I don't know. Well, that, that's the important bit, isn't it? It's this is where you will see what the background, the likes of John Stevenson, the head of football operations, mm. have been doing in terms of setting that structure so that realistically, when you're a modern, like a Brentford, they're always sounding out potential next managers that will fit mm. the style that they're going for. And they'll always have that permanent shortlist. So it'll be interesting to see if we followed a similar model and we're already proactively kind of looking at these things and looking at the future. Because at the end of the day, we, we seem to be, in terms of players as well, a, a team, a club that will succession plan windows in advance so if they've been doing that with coaches you would hope that they'll follow the same pattern as they have done with Critchley because at the end of the day it would have been a inevitable I think this season that he would have gotten approached from a championship club or a Premier League club for the manager's job I think we're quite unfortunate as well at the timing because I mean you look at Rob Edwards has left um, Forest Green yeah. Halifax managers just left all these sort of lower league progressive coaches that have have kind of already taken they've been taken up already we're kind of, kind of losing the quota of who's actually available at this point. Alan Taylor's just said on the chat, um, not to want to sound too cynical, but I wouldn't be surprised if we go down this year. Uh, how does everyone feel about that? I agree with that. I think my expectations have shifted from the target being maybe see if we can finish top half of the season, you know, top, top, top half of the table, et cetera, to, you know, staying up basically um it does feel like we've almost was back to square one in terms of our journey in the championship almost yeah i think it's more a case of this year it could be survival rather than anything else which is mm. you know Shit, isn't it, really, <laughs> it was like you what know. we wanted this year wasn't it but you know we're pushed on and uh, yeah i just think i think we would just be a case of if we can finish fourth bottom then who knows but yeah it's like it's like we've had this nice balloon of a season that's grown and grown and grown mm. and just deflated ever so slightly back in the season. Now someone's just got a pin and gone pop, yep, <laughs> and it's all burst. Mm. I, that's I football, isn't it? Personally, I thought personally we would probably struggle anyway this season. I feel like we weren't mm. with with the things going on in the background, the investments going on in the background. It's it's difficult to have a balance financially, and I feel like we weren't probably going to be able to take that next step this season at least okay um I one person I, I, who, who's, on. whose views we haven't um queried yet is uh mitch matt the other matt um matt's on holiday at the moment for in northumberland but he has left of this video so let's uh let's hear mitch's views on uh you know Kutch's departure right oh um I'm on holiday. It's look at the weather, beautiful Northumbria. Um, so there's no way my signal here in the middle of nowhere will stand up to be on the pod. So I thought I'd record a couple of minutes of thoughts on um, today's events. Um, I'm kind of over the desire to rant about him being a body warmer wearing polo shirt fetishizing side part in lighthouse family listening disloyal prick um because that's you know childish um 
I think my overwhelming response is that it's just a bit depressing because what it says, as much as it says about Critchley and his values and all the, you know, stuff, which was always a bit tepid, wasn't it? I mean, let's be honest, it was always a bit, it wasn't exactly sort of, you know, it wasn't Billy, was it? It was always a bit, yeah, like that. Got it in for him. Um, you know, at the end of the day, that comes with football. It's, it is what it is. I think it's just a bit depressing because what it signifies as much as anything is the gap between us, you know, the 1953 FA Cup winners, the the only team in football in tangerine and white and all of that and Villa who you know in some ways in terms of history and stuff you know don't feel that much bigger than us but they've been a Premier League club for about 25 out of 30 seasons and they're just on a different level and that they can come in and click the fingers and take our manager and just stick him in their coaching setup they can take somebody who is integral to us who's central to everything we've done in the last few years and that they can just make him just a, a piece in their jigsaw that he can be in the background propping up stevie g who's you know barely a fucking manager anyway you know he's a front man he's had michael beale and um the other lad walking him through rangers and now he's got Gary McAllister and Critchley next to him at Villa, you know, and he's just there for the telly, for the sky cameras. And I think that's my overwhelming feeling is just disappointment with it. Um, you know, emotion aside, Critchley did a, a good job and I'm sad to see him go. But it's just crap. I don't know who we're going to get. I suspect we'll get somebody from left field, you know, whoever's doing Critchley's job at Liverpool now. Um that Inglethorpe or somebody like that, you know, or that kind of figure, or we'll get somebody that's, you know, done well in League Two or that sort of figure. I can't see us, you know, pulling out Sean Dyche or someone out of the bag, um, or even taking one of the sort of glamorous Premier League assistants like Duncan Ferguson. I, I suspect we'll end up with somebody we go, who? And it'll be another gamble, but whatever you do, it's a gamble, isn't it? That's the joy of football. So, you know, at the end of the day, we go again. We've been here before, you know, whenever it was, 2008 or nine, wherever it was, 2008, wouldn't it? About Christmas, Larry buggered off and look what happened next. So we've been here before, we'll be here again. And um, we'll be here long after any manager or any player just up the new man sees the uh the worth in big gas all right take care up the pool quality the end <laughs> but, uh, i think the the backdrop to that the, the glumness of the northumberland weather and the drift <laughs> yeah. of rain it added to the emotion of that piece i think well i've just got lighthouse family me <laughs> <laughs> I think he's he's Mitch hit he's hit the nail on the head there, hasn't he? With the the upset, the fact that he sees him as a bit of a fraud now, which we all do, and you get the acceptance at the end that we have been here before, we have got through it before, and we're we're here the long haul. We're here forever. Managers come and go. But it still hurts, doesn't it? It does, and I suppose you know. We, if you look at where we've been in previous years, and the difference now is that who we've got in charge in terms of the board, um, you know, a lot more faith in them to hopefully make the right decision uh, compared to the previous lot. Um, and I agree with Mitch that it probably will be somebody we've not heard of or somebody from League Two I don't you know there's loads of names being banded about and you can look at already at the list and some of it's just laziness on the bookies part I think that they just go right who's out of a job 
let's stick them on the, the short list and how many of them are actually realistic. You know, I bet like Grayson's probably on it. Um, <laughs> yes. He's at 12, 12 to 1. one. There you He's go, not. 12 to 1. He's Might as well have me. I'm still at Feeney to Nandjale back. <laughs> we all want it. Yes. Look, um, all right, I'm... I'm... I'm not having this, all right. <laughs> we had Simon Grayson in, did a terrible job, got the sack. We got Holloway in, promoted to the Premier League. We had Simon Grayson in, did a terrible job, got the sack. We got Critch in, got promoted to the Championship. <laughs> Just give Simon Grayson a one-day deal to give him the sack and get somebody else in. Premier League, here we come. Yeah. Would we Sorted. welcome Appleton back? Not oh. Michael Appleton. Would we welcome him back? No, it's a no from me. No, I didn't no. mind him, but no, I think like I say I, I agree with Mitch. I think we'll get someone that we we most of us probably haven't heard of, and I think I'd probably rather that than some of the names on the list because some of them aren't going to be realistic, are they? You know, you look at Daesh people like that. They they're right. He might have the right color hair, but he, he <laughs> he's going to be on. <laughs> Brewsters. He'd be on silly money, wouldn't he? Yeah. And I don't think we're in that place. So um, we'll see. And it's a funny one, isn't it? These managerial lists, it's it's kind of such a niche market that you could stick a... If we all if we all picked a manager tomorrow off that list and went, right, all of us stick a tenner on it, his odds would come in massively just on the, on the back of us sticking well, a tenner. Well, it was that Notts County fan that... As long as his mates put his name on, didn't he? And he was joint favourite for about an hour. So, <laughs> yeah, sixteen-year-old who just did his A levels. All you need to do is become Notts County manager. Yeah, to be fair, he's in our uh, he's in our uh, style of manager. To be fair, right? Um, Joe sent us a video in. I've, uh, I've got it up now. So let's let's just hear what Joe's got to say. Take it away, Joseph. Absolutely gutted. Um, love to wish Neil Critchley good luck. At Villa, but uh, I'm like him. I'm not a liar. Uh, I'm not full of bullshit. All the stuff he said about us being the best fans in the land, tapping the badge, or bollocks, what it really, <laughs> doing it to keep the fans on side. Um, never fall in love with lone players. Uh, never fall in love with managers as well. Uh, yeah, the fact that he signed a new five-year deal. And a few months later, he's off. Not even to be a manager, to be a number two. It's just... Uh, doesn't sit well with me at all. Um, if anyone wants uh, in Critchley, we trust flag. Feel free to DM me. And, uh, yeah. That was, uh, candidates. Bucky's odds. It's a minging. Absolutely terrible. Um, yeah. We are in a lot of trouble. And uh, I don't envy Simon Sadler picking a new manager. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I fucked. <laughs> well, I was optimistic. <laughs> oh, Joe, with that encrypt we trust flag. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, someone talk about something. I'll bring Tim's up. Right. Oh, well, should we talk about who... Right, top of our heads, who we're going to bring in then? If we had a magic wand tomorrow. Realistic magic wand. Oh, I just want to about, I just want to do that at the end. After this. Oh, okay. So, talk, talk about Stealing what Joe thunder. said there. It's about what I expected from Joe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Quite funny, though. And especially the first thing I thought of was the flag. When, when he can, I just thought... <laughs> <laughs> You're always on a sticky wicket doing that, you know, getting a flag for the manager, aren't you? Because you just never know. Mm-hmm. Actually, I, 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 I actually point. think Joe cursed us. I think it was that flag that, you know, set the kind of universe's karmic jinx against us. Yeah. I hope that five year contract was bloody expensive. Because <laughs> we need as much crossed, money as we yeah. can, don't we? Right. Yeah. Uh, I've finally got it. Keir Starmer has also sent us a, a message <laughs> from the Dolomites or wherever he is. Let's listen to what Tim's got to say about it as well. Take it away, Tim. There we go. Live from Lake Garda. Um, heard the news like a else today. Uh, initial reaction was complete shock. It seems to have caught everybody by surprise. 
um, towards 72 Penneth Worth. Um, something's clearly gone on. I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of it, but um, um, it's terrible timing. <laughs> terrible, terrible. I mean, obviously, this is when you're looking at all your recruitment. This is when you're going to be looking at, you know, talking to players about who's staying and, and uh, you know, and, and who you can get signed on to slightly longer contracts. So, um, very difficult time. I, you know, I think it seems to come out left field because it seems that nobody seems to know anything much about it. Um, yeah, it's, I've got a bit of an empty, empty feeling tonight, to be honest. I just, uh, you know, after everything we've gone through over the last three seasons, um, you know, and uh, as others have said, for uh, Critch to leave for an assistant manager's job um, seems a, a massive backward step. And uh, still taking it all in. I'm going to try to listen to the pod later on. Uh, hope I'm sure there's going to be some, quite a lively debate on there. Um, so enjoy the rest of the evening, guys. And um, let's hope that um, Mansford and uh, and Sadler can, can, can pull a rabbit out of the hat because I think they're going to need to do it. Goodbye. Look at him, he's fuming. Like he's redder than a strawberry. You can just tell he's seething <laughs> underneath. <laughs> That's just about ten euros for a pint of Beretti. <laughs> <laughs> um, the running theme, then, gents, throughout these videos and through what people, a lot of people, are saying in the chat is, it seems to be a sideways step that everyone is upset the fact that he's not gone as another manager elsewhere, and Tim seems to think something's gone on there. Don't know anyone like to speculate. As to what Sean maybe he may be best place to give an opinion on that or a bit of dirt what? if you know any. No, 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 because like I say, it's it's all sprung sprung on us really. Obviously, we kind of the general consensus is that we do have a tight budget this summer, um, and that they're kind of prioritising funds in other areas. Obviously, they they <laughs> from what I believe, anyways, that we we are willing to bring Charlie Kirk back, and we would actually probably pay the money that they're asking for. But we want we were wanting to pay it in other areas, so it's it's kind of like prioritisation, which I think is perfectly reasonable. Because at the end of the day, the the infrastructure investment is so big. We're not a normal football club at the moment because we we was we're like thirty years behind every football club, and I think sometimes we forget that in that we aren't a normal football club, and we probably won't be for a good twenty years because we're so far behind everyone else that. You do have to make allowances, and even if that does risk relegation, sometimes it's just something that has to happen. To be self-sustainable and still pumping that amount of money into your infrastructure, it's not an easy balance to have. Um, as as fans, yeah, I, I agree. As fans, but it's hard. Would, to we, would we accept that? You know, have they gone too far in the infrastructure side? If it's going to affect the football, no, at the I, end I, of the day, I, I, I think they have no. to. Mm. Yeah, I think they, it's they have, needed doing. They absolutely have to, and that that might be another reason why Critchley's gone. You know, it's a good point. We're seeing this as a championship to, you know, assistant head coach move in a sideways, maybe backward step. As Sean says, we we're, we're years behind every other club in the behind the scenes setup and investment, etc. Um, really, we have no right to be in the championship based on our facilities and, you know, the kind of underlying club infrastructure. It's only because of massive kind of really strong performance by the playing squad we've got there. This investment has to happen, even if it does risk us going back down to League One, because that's the only A we're ever going to be able to, you know, develop young players, sell them on for a fee, kind of bring in those kind of revenue streams that are going to propel us forward. Hmm. Yeah, totally agree. It's, yep. you know, we've talked about training ground and the state of Squire, Squire's Gate for years and years and years, haven't we, that it hasn't changed much since the, the Stanley Matthews days. And it we've got an owner who's doing something about it and it isn't cheap. It's a massive investment. And if that means we have to, you know, scrape by... In the championship, if we can, for uh, the next couple of seasons, I think you know. If you, I was thinking before that when we were stood outside the West protest, and if someone said to you, "Right, would you take getting up to the championship and and just surviving and having an owner who'd put twenty million quid into redeveloping the ground and giving you a state of the art training ground?" You'd you'd snap the person's hand off, wouldn't you? Mm. Just at the moment, it feels a bit, and it's all raw because. 
So his critch is gone. But looking at the bigger picture, all of this off the field stuff has to happen. Um, and we need to just keep that in mind, I think. And that's why I understand it to an extent, the, the move that, that Critchley's done, because at the end of the day, we know all of the context behind everything that happens at the football club, but not a lot of other people will because they're not going to pay attention, are they? So they'll just look at what Critchley's doing and see that he was progressing. And then he t- if, say, we do get relegated next season under under his watch, then he's taken a backward step and perhaps he's he was a bit of a, a one-season wonder or what have you. Like People will have these perceptions, especially when he's not already had the offer of a championship job. And that's why, I think to an extent, I can't understand it because obviously there's, there's allegiances there for me and the, the fact that I kind of... I don't like... This is why I don't trust a, a, a badge-kissing manager because it, it just never ends well. Because at the end of the day, your personal pride and your personal reputation comes first and it always should do because... At the end of the day, it's, it's a job, isn't it? And the club would very quickly throw that allegiance aside if results weren't going your way. So it works both ways. So I can kind of, I can understand why he's done it I, in a purely management thinking about his reputation within the game point of view. Because I think there is a really good chance that he'd probably end up with a Premier League job by the end of the season if he if Villa improve and it's the people will instantly think it's because of Critchley, like we did with Calderwood when we suddenly got a kick up. People will have that with him. So. It does make sense, but it doesn't make sense. <laughs> mm. It's going to be hard, isn't it? Because, you know, the next guy who comes in as manager, would you would imagine, would know that there isn't a lot of funds available. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a really big sell for the club, isn't it? In terms of who they're getting next, it's going to be so difficult because they know that instantly they're going to be backs up against the wall in terms of negotiating with contracts and can't compete with X, Y and Z in the championship on wages. And and we we were always in that ballpark. We knew that already. But Critchley was like the X factor, wasn't he? And now we haven't got that X factor anymore. And that's what's going to be really, really difficult for us as a football club. And that's where I'm really concerned really because whoever we get in as the next manager has got to have some similar sort of credentials if not better credentials than Critchley and, and that's I don't know who's it going to be I don't know I don't know we'll move on to that uh, shortly but tarnished legacy is a, a subject that we might want to just discuss before we move on to the to the next manager Connor you've uh, you've penned a, a script and yeah, I leave points to try to just discuss uh, plenty of your thoughts on, it, on this topic. It feels like a lot of people feel, you know, oh, we're seeing a lot of comments of, you know, Critch is a snake, fuck off, Critch. You know, <laughs> Mitch put it very eloquently as well. Um, I'm not necessarily sure I agree in terms of kind of his legacy. At the end of the day, he got us promoted from one league to the other. It's very rare for a manager to do that. You know, he gave us a great playoff final kind of day out. Um, well, but people are still going to think he's a twat, though, Connor, at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, I know people this. are still going to think he's a twat. But at the end of the day, there are loads of people who are twats, and twats can do great things, you know, even despite <laughs> the fact they're full character. And I also don't think... Elon I, twat. I, I also don't think that... Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think the way that this move... It's certainly going to affect the way I see Critch. I still wouldn't wish him well. I want him to do well at Villa. I still think he's got the potential to be a future England manager if he plays his card right and doesn't bottle it, as again, lots of people in the comments think um, this move is indicative of. Um, but yeah, but it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's certainly the, the way the move has been handled, has been kind of all reacted to, is really interesting. And it feels like, a lot of people are drawing parallels to Holloway as well, which is really interesting. Nick, tarnished legacy, yes or no? I, I think it does a bit, yeah. Um, had he gone and got a manager's job at a top-end champ club, like we've said, or maybe bottom of the Prem, I think he, he would go with all of our best wishes and he'd always be welcome back. I think the way it's happened, I think most people... it. It's a bit raw, isn't it? And I don't think they'd see the. Um, they'd be thinking about the good times. I think they'd be uh, still be a bit annoyed at him. Um, mm. 
yeah, it does it does feel a bit like we've been left in the lurch. Matt Tarnished Legacy was it as bad as Holloway? You can kind of understand well, you can understand why Holloway left the, the conditions he was working under. Neil Critchley had um he well, he's had um quite a lot more tools available to him uh, and not the awful conditions that Holloway worked under. So for me, Ollie never tarnished his legacy by walking out. You could, you could understand it, but not Neil Critchley, particularly going no. to a, uh, a, a an assistant role. No, and no, I think that's what, what 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 it's all about. I think he had a um, an opportunity to build a legacy, and he's left that opportunity behind. So therefore, I suppose it is a tarnished one in a way. Um, yeah, uh, it's it, it just feels like a job that hasn't been completed, doesn't it? Really, that he had the opportunity to build something really big and leave us in a much better position and him in a much better position. And it's just happened very, very prematurely as far as I can see. So, yeah, tarnished, really. Sean, so that's three tarnishes. Um, I'm I'm going to jump on the tarnished bandwagon as well. I think it's an unfinished, unfinished business. I'd have liked to have seen him go to... Uh, at uh, number one role, uh, either a bigger club or a Premier League club. So, what's your thoughts on Mister uh, Mister Critchley's legacy? And you will no longer be praised about loving a stat either. I know this is just going to miss that so much. Um, Thomas legacy a, for that then. Yeah, it's just a tricky one. It's a tricky one. I I, I just think the manner of it was. Not great, but at the same time, if if something's happened behind the scenes that makes you want to take that step, then we'll never be privy to that, and that's that kind of game, really. It's in it to an extent that you you kind of you'll never be able to have the full picture to know whether you know what he's done is 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 good or bad, really. But I, I think that when we look back on this job in five minutes, in five years' time or so, then I think we'll realise how good a job he's done. I think personally, I make the point. Um, earlier on today that I feel like if you've got a mid-table squad in League One, he will get you the playoffs or promotion. If you've got a relegation squad in the championship, he will get you mid-table. It's kind of like he always can give that extra added step to every squad that he works with. But I also think he's a really ambitious guy that doesn't want to sit still. And if he sees an inkling that the club perhaps are going to sit still for a few years while they've got other funds elsewhere, then at the end of the day, as much as you love the club and stuff, you've kind of have eventually got to think about yourself and it, we, we, it's just naive to think that anyone, any manager at all, really in in modern football, is going mm. to be someone who will stick around for ten, fifteen years just for the sake of a club mm. and their ambitions and what they want to do. He had no prior affinity for the area. I think he does genuinely love the club. I think he genuinely bought on board to it. He understood what the community meant. He understood what the fans meant. He just got it. He did get Blackpool, and that's why it feels worse because. Mm. You felt like that connection was just as important as the results on the pitch with Critchley, and that's mm. a shame because it, it's quite rare in football now. So, I think at the moment it's it's hard to take, but I think over time, I think I'll very quickly get over it because I think that I'm already thinking. Do you know what? If he goes on and is a Premier League manager in in a couple of seasons' time, then I'll be supporting him and I'll be hoping that he does well. So clearly, I don't think that it's tarnished it in in my eyes. Four to one, but yeah, yeah, you make some good points though, Sean. I'm more sort of taking the emotion out of it. I think that's I think. the thing when you, if you take the emotion, it's so raw at the moment, isn't it? Sean's right that in time, if he goes on, does well, you know, whether that's at Villa or you know, whether he ends up back at Liverpool or wherever, we will probably look back and go, you know. His first managerial jobs with Blackpool and feel quite proud of what he does for us at the moment. It's a bit raw to feel like that, isn't it? Hmm. I've noticed in the chat there's a lot of people referencing this Kirk deal. That he's he, he wasn't happy about that. Uh, Cameron Brannigan not happy about that also. Uh, Mark Thompson's just said he was not happy with how the Brannigan situation was handled. And uh, Mac, Mac Preston said we need a statement from the board as we're treating rumours as a fact. I don't think that's going to be forthcoming, is it, given the closed shop nature of the board and what they put out? I think sometimes that doesn't help in terms of that, but at the end of the day, they don't need to do it. They don't need to address the fans, but I think sometimes it would be handy and I don't know if they'll go about and do it, but 
these supported dialogue meetings a bit few and far between. I think the public could be better in terms of engaging in questions with the fans. Um, so it would be nice for that to, to come. But at the end of the day, if, if it's something that's happened behind closed doors, it is, it is none of our business, really, is it? If mm. it's, it is what it is. We'll move on, we'll get a new manager and we'll crack on. So, But I think that the it's just that, that for me, I don't think it's specific things, but the general consensus is that we have a very tight budget and we are kind of nitpicking with deals a bit and being a bit unsure of where to spend the money where and what priorities are more important. Obviously, we missed out on Ebu Adams at the start of the window. That's probably about the fifth centimetre that we've missed out on. These things start to stack up and he's probably starting to think perhaps that we were going to stagnate. And if you've got an offer to sit on the bench in the Premier League and not be the one that's in the firing line, but do all the work in behind the scenes for better money and you still, you've got your reputation intact you leave on a high, it makes sense to, to move on, really. Hmm. Right, so what next for Blackpool FC? Um, Connor, you've put presumably with yeah, that compensation well, deal in there, uh, as he was, you, you've, you've mentioned he was contracted to 2025, so you'd like to think we'll get a reasonable fee from Villa for that. Yeah, I think so. I'm hoping it would be a couple of million, I doubt it would be much more than that, to be honest. Um, you know, if he's on a four-year contract, you know, and he's on, you know, decent wages, maybe a K, a couple of K a year, you know, we'll get potentially a million quid, half a million quid, whatever. So, you know, we'll get we'll get a money back that can be invested, hopefully, in the squad or in, you know, wages for an impressive manager. Who that manager should be, I don't know. I'm sure we'll kind of come on to that guessing game as a group. In terms of kind of what next and what I think we should be looking for, I put a tweet out about this and I've had a, already had a bite from Bison, which is nice. <laughs> um, Always. I think for me it's about we need to get a manager in who is defensively solid and has shown that they can create a kind of well-drilled squad in a short amount of time because – Scoring goals is great, but it's not conceding. That ultimately, I think, will keep us in the championship on a, um, if we really need it and with the squad we have. Um, and then secondly, I think we need a manager who, similar to Critch, had a kind of commitment to youth development, etc., recognises the importance of that and is on board with that part of our journey as a club which is a very important part of our journey as a club now in terms of maybe getting that category two academy status building that bridge to the first team by getting an under 23 squad in etc and you know the last thing we want to do is be you know a tin pot club like preston where all our best under 17s players get picked off by local rivals like blackburn you know tyrese dolan being a great example um so I think flat me, that's that's what I'm hopefully looking for in the next manager. It's kind of defensive solidity, able to get a squad well drilled and experience, you know, bringing youngsters into a squad or, you know, really showing they recognise the importance of that. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking for a manager, those are the attributes I'd be really focused on. You know, last season we had the fewest minutes given to academy players in the championship and that just isn't sustainable if we're going to grow as a club. We need to start building our own players, growing our own player base. Well, we'll put Nick over to you. Same sort of questions. Where I guess, um, who do you want as your next manager, and what attributes do you want that that manager to have? I, I, I don't know yet in terms of who I want. Um, what I want them to be able to do: um, attractive football, which says you know is an obvious thing to say, but. Um, you know, if it if it's dire long ball, it, it it gets a bit tedious, doesn't it? I don't I don't think it would be that. Um, somebody who's good at uh, set piece drills, getting us uh, to beat mm-hmm. the first man on corners, would be nice. Um, Did anyone see that stat in there? Yes, was were we third or fourth? Fourth uh, in the country on goals from corners. Ten. I was I was what? amazed at that. I was amazed at that. Um, was it at the championship playoff final? They had some stats on it, there. was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was, yeah. was gobsmacked when I saw that, yeah. Um, and it needs to be someone who because he's not going to have a lot of money to spend. Um, you know, we'll probably have one of the smallest budgets in the division. What's Gary Bowie um, doing these days? He's just been popping, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, um, 
it's probably somebody a bit in the critch mold, and I think that's who we will go for. Somebody a bit left field who we probably don't know who's good at um, developing younger players, and it would be great to see, you know, one of the two of the, the ones, the likes of Rob Apter and stuff, who've who've been out on loan. Um, whether they're ready for the championship yet, yeah, perhaps not just, but at some point, it would be great to see two or three of those making it into the team. And I think it's important that they do if you've not got the money to go and buy proven championship players because they cost a lot of money and they also come with a lot of wages. You know, if you're signing the player for two or three million quid, they're not coming for six or seven grand a week. Um, and I don't think we're in the the market for, for doing that and, and paying players 15 or 20 grand a week. So whoever it is who comes in, he's going to have to work with, you know, effectively quite a few League One players and get them to perform um, above and beyond. So it'll be interesting to see who it is. I think, it, I think it'll be a young upcoming manager from somewhere. Matt, over to you. Penny, for your thoughts on uh, where the direction you want the club to go in and what sort of managers... We should be looking at. It's really difficult because I thought the direction we were going in was the right direction. And now it's who's going to go into that void that's been left. Um, I have no idea. I think there's, there must be somebody out there, like we, we've already mentioned about various under, I don't know, Premier under 23 managers or reserve team managers or whatever they've call them these days whether there's somebody of a foreign manager who might you know be I don't know buying Munich's number two or something that we well, Chris, not Chris even was think a bit out of left field wasn't it like you say yeah, it was like a... yeah exactly you know and, and it could be somebody like that um you I know, think Daniel my, Fa- my, Daniel my Farker is sort of springs the, uh... to mind he came out of nowhere didn't he when he was at Norwich and did a really good job and I'm not saying we're in for him, but, you know, that type of manager that nobody had ever heard of and he'd done a really good job. And um, I saw him at Munich Airport when I was coming back from a weekend away the other week and whether I was should have had a word with him, I don't know at the time. But, you know, um, but there's that sort of manager out there, isn't there, you know, that we just don't know about that's available. Yeah. Um, but I think that it has to be somebody who's in that sort of mould um, I don't know whether it's anybody that's more local, you know, you know, Liam Richardson or Ian Everett or those sort of managers, whether they've got the clout or the experience even to do what we want them to do. I'm not entirely sure. You've just got to trust the board, haven't you, at this particular moment. It's very, very difficult. I couldn't I couldn't pick anybody, I'll be honest. I just hope that that you know that whatever decisions they make, it's the right decision, and, and we've just got to stick with them, haven't we? And as fans, as we know, you know th- things change very quickly, so we've just got to stick with it, whoever they might be. Trust the process. Trust the process. <laughs> whatever that is okay. these days. <laughs> right. Okay. So one name that has been uh, banded around quite considerably is. Uh, Evo and Tomo as a combination. Now, uh, Sean, let's give your your views on um, bringing Evo back and uh, with Steve Thompson as his assistant. Can you not hear me? Guess not. He's left. Stunned silence. <laughs> He's got John. That's a great idea for a Lanks Live article. I'm going to go write it. <laughs> To the room then, Evo and Tomo. Almost sounds a bit like a green ticket, doesn't it? Like Billy Air and Graham Carr. Is it, is it me or does it just almost feel a bit, I don't know, Regressive. not the modern time? I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading a little bit too into it. I don't know. I don't know. If anything, it is the modern thing now. You know, look at... Um... Arsenal, United, Chelsea with Lampard, etc. You know, they all had periods when they mm. brought in former players as managers just for just for their vibes, as it were. You know, yeah. brought in people with links to the clubs just just to see how it went. Um, some of those went better than others. Um, 
but you know, it's, it certainly seems to be an accepted practice nowadays. Sean's has back. Has Evo done yeah, a good I'm job at, at Bolton? At I, I think that I, I, he's obviously done a good job. I think that, to be honest, he's probably on to something at Bolton heading into next season. They, they're they quite well prepared, well structured, and I think they've got a really good chance of going up. So it, it, it depends if he would leave that. I, 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 I don't, I can't see it personally. I can't see it. And I think that the whole Evo and Tomo thing is just like we're wanting some heart back to the past thing, which I don't really subscribe to because I mean look how well we've done with Neil Critchley and you don't need prior affinity to an area to be a, a good manager so mm. I kind of like to shy away from them a bit um, just talking about the when you were saying about the sort of left field candidate I did see a couple of days ago there was um, an article about how Arsenal are bracing for offers for their under 23 coach Kevin Betsy I think it is and that and that they were bracing because he's on a number of EFL shortlists, which just seems pretty good timing. Forty-eight hours ago, so that he used seems to play like that would fit the he? model. And that... Is that the lad I'm thinking of? Is <laughs> black lad who used to play at front front. I'm sure it was Kevin Betsy. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't... yeah, yeah. I'm yeah so he's there under the generational gap here, but yeah, I'm sure it was. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm so lost. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, he. He fits the uh, he fits the model, so I don't know that that stunk to me. Of obviously, is getting his name out there, so perhaps mm. he would fit the bill. Um, well, I think we forget sometimes that Critchley wasn't the first choice as well. We have true. What about this one then? Well, no, I, I I'll just stick with Kevin Betsy for a second. I think immediately the jumps out. We should big plus point is to be able to get Tyrese John Jules back on the. <laughs> <That's what I laughs> <just> <laughs> Uh, sign oh. Kevin up. Get Tyrese back. Get him. Get him. him. Sign him. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan Ballard, who's been released, saw the other day. Yeah. Had a bit of a coup. Okay. Yeah. Um, not released, like I've been made available for a permanent transfer. But um, I just, a just comment in there. Just, quick, just quickly well, Google yeah, well, that uh, League Two Crawley are after Kevin Betsy. So oh, there we there go. go. In demand. What was I going to say? Something to do with Arsenal. I can't remember. I don't know. Well, I, I heard the word. I, I froze out, and yeah. then I heard Tyrese John Jules, so I thought I might just permanently leave, to be honest. <laughs> well, that yeah, was it. That bombshell. What but, if, what if Marvin Teta joins Aston Villa? How would you feel then? We sure, were, would you change your tarnished legacy state yes yeah well if he just comes and nicks everyone then yes i definitely would but just again depends. it's one of them i'd be so proud of Mar- i just i have this like almost like proud dad energy about marv going to the prem like after obviously his journey he's been through so i wouldn't begrudge him at all and he, he'd no. absolutely smash it as well so absolutely i mean he should be he should be the first recommendation because he's met i think he's ready made to go up there and absolutely walk it to be honest yeah him and gary medine <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the names we've got? Um, There's Liam Manning, crazy. isn't there? Liam Manning's quite. Who's a, he, Sean? I've never he's MK Dons, is he? Yeah, so he was part of the City group with was it Lomel in Belgium. Um, and that's, that's, is that where Dan Grimshaw went on loan? I'm pretty sure he did when he went on loan from Manchester City. Yeah. So um, he's the, the, the progressive. Plays nice football, young up and coming manager. Again, another one of those that you would think that perhaps would be in for. It seems as though he was in for the QPR job, and, and Michael Beale's got it in the end. So, um, I'm a, a left. Another shout for me would be Tam Courts at Dundee United, but that's just my personal preference. He's another young up and coming manager. Had a good season. Plays nice football. Progressive. Likes data as well, which is basically the main sell for me. Does, but does he love, those types of names. Does he love a stat? He does love a start, and that's the most important thing. And they play in Tangerine. Oh, oh, they do, yeah. see it. <laughs> that's our man. That's our boy. <laughs> What's his name again? Uh, Tam Courts. Tam Courts. Mm, we should court him. Um, a few more names on the list. Sean Dyche. Is he within our team? No. no. Just won't be enough. Not financially, no. No. He'll wait. He, wait. He's going to sit. Keep being paid by Burnley because he signed a new deal with them, I think, last year. 
and they have to keep paying him until he finds a new job, which I imagine will be when Steve Bruce is sacked by West Brom in November. Yeah. Yeah. West Brom um, or Watford, somebody like that. Wayne Rooney, is that just for the lols? Whoever's written that. I don't know. I, I, he did a good job I, at Derby, didn't he? Well, he did a good job in the second season at Derby. Sam made a good point in the podcast patrons chat, which is that his first season wasn't so great, but played a lot of time with young players, partly because he had to, because the squad was terrible and they didn't they could literally couldn't spend money. Um and also very showed of ability to get a very changing kind of small squad drilled defensively very quickly. Whether he'd want to leave Derby. I don't know. It seems like he's kind of got like cult hero status there at the moment. Um, but could be good fun to have Wayne Rooney at Blackpool. Probably isn't going to happen. Um, be great to get his name on the back of the shirt, though. What about Roy Keane? Roy Keane, eh? What about that? No, um, can't uh, that. Uh, Sam, you know, the podcast patrons chat chats was uh, flying the flag for a, a one, a certain Joey Barton. <laughs> Mm. What about Richard Keogh? I'd love him, Keogh. I'd, I would be fully on board with Richard Keogh. Just keep the current assistant and backroom staff if we've got and just stick Richard Keogh at the helm. I'm fully on board with that. What's happening with Garrity then? Is he gone as well? Is he know, he'd be like Kit Man or something, Johnny. Just <laughs> you can't <just> appear. <laughs> Just give Garrity the full time job. The players would be so good at clapping and pointing. <laughs> <laughs> right, gents, I think we've done that to death, haven't we? I've been over an hour. Any 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 more closing thoughts or remarks before It'll we go? Feel better in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so it's always better in the morning, morning. isn't it? Oh, what about this one? Charlie Adam. You can't just keep naming all Blackpool oh, players. I, know. I, <laughs> I like Tom Corks anyway, Sean, from what you've There we are. Said. Fully on board with a Tam Mobile. Yeah. Tam. Tam. What sort of name is Tam? It's Thomas, Scottish isn't it? Like one. Scottish for Tam. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, you learn something every day, don't you? Will we be able right. to understand what he's saying in press conferences, Sean? I mean, he's quite well spoken for, for <laughs> okay. a Scotland. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> It's not a, a Rab C Nesbit style Scottish yeah. uh, speaking. Yeah. Right. Um, I think Keegan we'll leave it there, Parker, ladies and gents, anyway. <laughs> what? what was that? Keegan so Parker. Parker. Keegan Parker. Nathan Delfonso. That's spelt wrong. There we go. You never know. <laughs> Terry McPhillips return. Right, what's <laughs> Neil McDonald up to these days? I'm sure he's got like a really good job. I can't remember what it is, but I'm pretty sure he's on like a really good job. He was a scout at West Ham like the other year. Uh, everybody, um, everyone's watching on YouTube. As Dennis said, please give this the thumbs up. Thanks. Yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, do subscribe to the channel. You will get more brilliant videos like this automatically sent. Do like and all that. We've also got a podcast patrons group. So if you want to chip in a few quid per month. Good bounce on there, isn't it, gents? It is. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Indeed. What's the URL? Patreon.com forward slash C Sam's pod. Three quid. Uh, price per pint per month. And you also get the odd um, piece of uh, exclusive content every now and then. But I think we'll we'll leave it there for, for now, gents, and say goodbye to up the pool. 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 Critchley out. <laughs>